Uh, my name is Akash. I'm a product manager on the Gmail team at Google. And so we have some really exciting uh, updates, announcements, and demos to share with you today. Um, so let's, let's get started. Let's start by talking a little bit about Gmail. Um, as we heard this morning, over 1.4 billion people use Gmail every month, including users in over 4 million businesses. And in these business and enterprise settings, Gmail plays a central role in how people get their work done. Business users of Gmail, like many of us in the room here today, use Gmail to manage our work from end to end. We use it to inform our colleagues about updates, to negotiate terms with customers, uh, or to stay connected with our teams. Regardless of whether you're a salesperson, a marketer, an engineer, or a manager, you probably spend a lot of your time in Gmail. But a lot of the work that we do in Gmail also touches a bunch of other tools. Project management apps, CRM tools, communication apps, HR software. This means that when we're reading our email and when we're processing our email, we frequently switch to, over to another app in order to complete some action or look up some information. And all this context switching can really hurt our productivity. For example, if a designer gets a, an email in Gmail with a task that they need to complete, they have to switch over to their project management tool to make sure that, that it's tracked. Or if a salesperson makes contact with a new prospect, they have to switch to their CRM tool to create the account and track the lead. Or if you get an email about something really urgent and you need to jump into a video call right away, you have to switch to your conferencing app, get everything configured and started to, uh, to actually do the task. And so in doing each of these tasks, users spend a bunch of time opening up a new tab uh, or app, setting up the right context, and then taking some action, and then returning back to their email. What's more is they also run the risk of getting distracted. And it can take a while for them to get back in the zone when they, uh, when they return to their email afterwards. We've all seen Chrome windows that look like this with 10 or 40 or 100 uh, tabs open because the user is constantly switching between different contexts. And this is even more of a problem on mobile where uh, app switching is a bit more cumbersome. So that's why about nine months ago, we launched Gmail add-ons, a platform for integrating apps into Gmail. Gmail add-ons let users take actions directly from their inboxes so that they can stay productive instead of frequently jumping around between apps and tabs to get their work done. So let's take a quick look at how some of these work. That designer can just pop open the Asana add-on on their phone to quickly create the relevant task in their to-do list. When they open the Asana add-on, it's pre-populated with all the relevant details from the message so that they can quickly get back to whatever they were doing. Using the ProsperWorks add-on, that salesperson can quickly create a contact for the lead that they came across and log any activity like meetings or phone calls. And with the Zoom add-on, users can initiate Zoom video calls in just one or two clicks right from Gmail. And those are just a few examples. Since our launch nine months ago, we've seen a wide range of enterprise developers building and shipping these add-ons for Gmail. From project management tools like Smartsheet and Asana, to CRM apps like ProsperWorks and Streak, to workflow tools like DocuSign, there's almost definitely a Gmail add-on in our catalog to help your users become more productive while they're managing their email. We have over 45 add-ons available in our catalog today, and we continue to add more and more every week. So we've been really pleased to see the popularity with, uh, with developers so far for building these add-ons for, for enterprise users. And the great news is users love them too. Uh, in these first nine months, add-ons have been installed by users over four and a half million times. And users really appreciate the convenience and the improved productivity that they see with a Gmail add-on. Over 80% of the add-ons in our marketplace have four-star ratings or higher. And since many of these publicly available add-ons are targeted at business users, it's clear to us that we're helping satisfy a real need for uh, Gmail users in the workplace. So if you haven't already, um, I encourage you to try a Gmail add-on. You can install them from Gmail by clicking on the Settings button in the top right and choosing Get Add-ons. Now, we've also taken care to ensure that Gmail add-ons are ready for the large enterprise and the requirements of admins and IT teams. All of these productivity benefits are great for end users, but they don't achieve a whole lot if admins can't secure them, can't manage them, and can't customize them. So first, add-ons are the most secure way to extend the Gmail UI. Add-ons are required to use limited access scopes so that they can only access message data um, for the specific message that the user is looking at and only during that specific session. So admins can be confident that data isn't being overshared. Second, add-ons can be managed from the G Suite administrator console where admins can install an add-on for the entire G Suite domain or for specific organizational units. So for example, you can install your CRM app just for your sales and support staff. Admins can also maintain a whitelist of add-ons that are available for users to manually install. 
And last, and this is pretty exciting for, for admins and IT teams, we know that many of our large customers use custom internal applications for a whole variety of business processes, including HR tracking, expense management, approval workflows, and many, many others. Gmail add-ons are a perfect fit for these in-house applications as well. Admins and IT teams can easily build a Gmail add-on that connects to their own apps. So your custom add-on can make requests directly to your own internal services and provide users with those useful, uh, the, the relevant information and quick actions that they need right from the Gmail interface. The add-ons that you build as an admin are also cross-platform by default. So they'll work across web and mobile with no extra coding on your part. And once you've built your add-on, you can publish it internally for use within your domain. You can also easily deploy it to the entire domain or to specific organizational units, just like a public add-on. Add-ons are built using AppScript, which is the develop development platform for quickly and easily building uh, applications that integrate with G Suite. And for more details on how you can build your own add-on, check out our developer documentation at developers.google.com slash gmail slash add-ons. So we think it's a really powerful tool. Add-ons are a really powerful way for IT teams to integrate their internal apps into Gmail. So hopefully that was uh, a useful, quick overview of all the things that Gmail add-ons are capable of today. And uh, now let's start talking a little about the future of Gmail add-ons. After seeing the success so far of the Gmail add-ons platform and the opportunity that we have to make users more productive with third-party tools in a way that's secure and admin-friendly, we have decided to double down on Gmail add-ons as the platform for extending Gmail. And today we have some exciting announcements and a couple demos to that end. First, as we saw in a couple of those, uh, a couple of those animations earlier, Gmail add-ons can be really useful when you're reading your email. You can quickly take an action or look up some information right from the conversation view. It's pretty cool. But reading email is only about half of the story. A lot of us spend a lot of our time writing and sending email as well. And often, when you're writing an email, you think of something that you need to include that you don't actually have memorized. For example, a link to a file or the details of some ticket in your issue tracking system. So what do you do? You uh, open up a new tab, and you switch to that tab, you search for the item that you need, you copy a link or some details, you return to Gmail, you pop the uh, link into your uh, compose box, and then you send your draft. This is even more laborious on mobile, where app switching is, is a bit more cumbersome. You have to switch apps, find a share dialog, copy the content, paste it in. Um, so it's a lot of steps. And the whole point of Gmail add-ons is to um, help you stop context switching and make it easier for you to get more done from within your Gmail experience. So we're really excited today to introduce Compose Actions for Gmail add-ons. In addition to the side panel of Gmail, developers can now integrate directly into the Compose view of, of uh, the Gmail UI. Users will be able to invoke an add-on from the Compose view, browse content from the add-on, and insert it into their draft. So let's take a look at a sample Compose action. After installing with a, an add-on with a Compose action, users will see a little icon in the bottom there, uh, right there in the Compose box, anytime that they start a new draft. When they click on it, the add-on will show them some options for some content that they can insert into their draft. In this fictional example, the add-on is for a an issue tracking system so the user can select an issue that they want to reference and drop it into their draft. When they click insert link, the add-on can pop a piece of HTML into their draft uh, for the user. So in this case, it's a pretty, pretty link to the issue. And compose actions can be used for all kinds of use cases. Referencing documents, linking to tickets in your issue tracker, sending contacts, uh, creating canned responses, or just for making your, um, making your messages more fun and expressive with GIFs and images. So we're really excited to see where developers take this new functionality. So that's the new Compose Actions for Gmail add-ons. Uh, we think users are going to love the convenience of writing emails with the help of the other tools that they use. And now this next set of announcements is very, very exciting. Um, we're launching three new add-ons from a few of the most popular apps in enterprises today. We think all of these will help our users uh, become more productive when using these tools alongside Gmail. So to kick it off, I'd like to invite uh, Derek Lansing from Box up on stage. All right, check one, two, can you hear me? Do I have, oh, there we go. All right, thanks everyone, thanks Akash. Uh, as Akash mentioned, my name is Derek Lansing, and I manage a really talented group of engineers at Box who are in charge of our partner integrations. So I'm really excited to show one of the integrations that we're, we've built recently, which is against Gmail. So for those of you who may not be quite as familiar, let me tell you a little bit about who we are at Box and what we do. So at Box, we, we're a cloud content management company. And what that means to you is that we are the one place where you can store all of your content. You can use it across all of your devices, all of your applications. So there are three pillars there, productivity, security, and intelligence. The productivity re refers to the 1,400 plus applications in our ecosystem. 
that you can use from Salesforce, from G Suite, from any device, mobile, desktop, whatever. Um, and Akash, can you log into your computer for the demo? Sorry. Um, the security is how do we consistently provide security, compliance, governance across all of your content and not inhibit your users from all of the things they really want to do to get work done? And then intelligence is around using built-in box workflow functionality as well as ML from providers like Google to make your content more useful, bring context to your content. So this is what they tell me is a logo slide. And what I find interesting about this is just looking at the breadth of logos you see here. Right? They cover every geography. They cover every industry, including some really highly regulated industries like finance, like healthcare, like government organizations. And then you know, we're, we're in 85,000 customers across the globe, 69% of the Fortune 500. So how do Box and Google work better together? Right. Uh, about, and so in 2016, Box and Google entered a strategic partnership. And since then, we've been working together to produce some really amazing tools, features, and products for you guys. Uh, so Doc Sheets and Slides integration with Box. We recently launched a Google, uh, Google chat, or Hangouts chat chatbot. We're working on a Gmail integration, and we're using Google ML in that intelligence space that I mentioned earlier. So if you're interested in the Doc Sheets and Slides presentation, we'll actually uh, have a session tomorrow. You can find out more from me later on that. But what we're going to talk about today really is the Gmail integration. All right, demo time. And this is where I get to be the tech crew. Ha ha, success. Let's uh, make that bigger. All right, so the, the persona I'll take on during our demo is that of a marketer. And the reason I want to use a marketing demo is because marketing is a really common use case on Box that we really excel at. A marketing team will often share assets with an agency that is outside of their enterprise. So they're sending really sensitive content outside of their firewall, outside of their enterprise user you know, control. And so being able to do that securely is a little bit tricky and really important. So if you'll give me just one minute, I need to transform into a marketer. So one second. OK, done. And now you can tell by the way I'm dressed that I'm clearly a marketing professional. <laughs> or at least I can dream that I am. So let's, let, let, me, let me explain what we're working on here. We, we have a white paper demo that we're doing here, a white paper campaign. And I've been waiting on this draft from Kyle. And it finally got it. And so what I want to do is I actually want to take a look at this draft, review it, maybe make it a little more useful, and collaborate on it with both internal and external stakeholders. This is the first place that we see Box show up. And, and this is the existing functionality of the kind of the reading context of the Gmail integrations. So when I click on the box icon, I see that we've gone through and, and taken a look at what is in this email to provide some contextual options for you here. We see that there is one attachment called moving to the cloud.pdf, so I have an option to save my attachments. As you might expect, that actually saves your attachments into box. There's also an option to save your message as a text file. That's not something I'm going to demo today, but if you have the need to ingest content or ingest emails for you know, governance or for a CASB or something like that, you would this would suit that need. So let's go ahead and click Save Attachments. And what we're going to see here is a view of my content in Box. And so this is reflecting a lot of the UI hints that exist in the Box UI. This is respecting all of my permissions. I'm only seeing what I'm supposed to see. So in this instance, a Manila folder, for example, is a folder I own. It's not shared with anyone. Uh, a gray folder is, shared, is owned externally and shared with me, or a blue folder is owned by someone in my enterprise, which may or may not be me, and is shared with someone. So since I'm working with, oops, an external agency on this, and I froze it, what's going on? The curse of the live demo. Let's see, let's kill it and reopen it. Oh, let's kill it and go, go, go get new, new context. So save attachments. Put it in our external agencies folder. We have our moving to the cloud project. And let's go ahead and save it here. Now, this is a one and a half meg file. It's going to take just a second. It's a bit risky for a demo, but it worked. So again, we, we maintain that context, right? So as Akash mentioned, there's this context in this email of the file I'm working on. And I don't need to go find this inbox. I can just open a link that takes me directly to the folder that this, this file was put in. 
So from here, I can go ahead and use traditional box functionality. I can preview the file. I can take a look at this and say, you know what? I I'm gonna read this with about the, the level of depth I usually read my Gmail end user license agreement. Uh, so we'll pretend that I've read all of this. And the only thing I really noticed was that I don't really like the title. I think it should be more descriptive. So I'm just gonna add a comment in box. And then I wanna continue this conversation back in Gmail. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of, out of box and go back to Gmail. And let me just reply to Kyle here. Let me also add Priscilla. She's working on this project with Kyle. And say, I've made some edits, or some comments. Please update the file. So right from in here, this is the second time we see a box logo show up, and this is the compose time integration. So from here, what I want to do is actually go insert the, I, I want to go insert that file back into the conversation. And so when I click the box icon here, I get another similar view, right? We're respecting all the same UI patterns, we're all the same permissions. So this is in my external agencies folder. Am I moving to the cloud project? And then the file. When we click on the file itself, we get a little bit of metadata. We see who the owner is. We see what the size is, when it was created, right? Just enough so I know that it's the right file. If this was an image or a video, you would actually see a thumbnail of the file below here. And then this, the thing I want you to pay attention to here is this shared link permissions. So we're not actually attaching a file here. We're dealing with content that is a file, and we're putting it in the email, but it's not an attachment. We're maintaining the fact that this file is stored on Box. You don't have to worry about what version people are on. And we also can control the access that we're sending that with. So with box shared links, there's the concept of access levels. People with the link is the most open. So if I'm sending this externally, anyone who gets this URL, which is a unique URL and kind of hard to guess, can get into the file. I can restrict it to people inside of my company, so people with the at box.com domain, uh, or people in the folder or file, so people I've explicitly collaborated in box. For this case, let's just leave it as people with the link. Let's insert the file. And so here we get this HTML component put right into the message, right? So as Akash mentioned, this, this works no matter whether you have this add-on enabled or not, or even if you're a Gmail user or not. Anyone can view this as long as they can view an HTML email message, which should be everyone. So let's go ahead and send this out. And now I've, I've continued the conversation. I've, I've brought my content into the one place that it's secure, and I can work on it with all of my coworkers and with my agencies, <clears throat> and, and not worry about who has access, or who has what version, all of those details. So uh, in summary, uh, you know, what, we're, what we're showing you here is the, the read time context here of let's, let's evaluate what's in the email right now, save the content to box, as well as the, the compose time where we can insert more content into the message. So with that, I believe we're done. So again, uh, feel free to Talk to me later about uh, the G Suite box and the doc sheets and slides integration with Google uh, afterwards. All right, Akash. All right, thanks so much, Derek. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite Caroline and Tim from Atlassian. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Caroline, this is Tim. We're from the strategic integrations team at Atlassian. Here's our logo slide. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Atlassian, um, we are the team behind products such as Jira and Trello, which are agile project management and issue tracking tools. Uh, Bitbucket and SourceTree used for um, collaborative coding. Confluence, which is used for collaborating on documentation, and also Status Page, which is for communicating incidents and status. Uh, so the mission at Atlassian that we, that we have is to unleash the potential of every team. And that purpose really underpins all of our products. Um, so I would, globally on a daily basis, there are millions of users who rely on our products to help them improve software development, project management, collaboration, and also code quality. So we're really excited to be here today to announce and introduce you to Atlassian Cloud for Gmail. Uh, 
I guess like this would be a good point. I want to get a show of hands. Who here is using Jira with their teams? Oh, cool. This is so cool. Um, what about Bitbucket? OK, a little bit less there. Lots of Jira users. Um, but I'd say, like, to me, that looked like maybe 70% of you, so that's really exciting. Um, and then subsequently, I'm delighted to tell you that um, Elastian Cloud for Gmail supports both Jira Cloud and Bitbucket Cloud. And it's designed to um, provide you with useful context about issues, pull requests, and pipeline builds directly from your inbox. So to tell you a little bit more about my team, as I mentioned, strategic integrations, um, it's, a, it's a team which is pretty distributed. So our team members are located in multiple locations across the, the world. So Tim and I are actually based out of Sydney, Australia. Um, we work heavily with the guys from Partnerships uh, from San Francisco, but also a couple other locations in the US. And then our development team is uh, distributed across three cities um, in Europe. So what this ultimately means is we are uh, spread across multiple time zones, and pretty much there is activity across all of our projects on a 24-hour basis. So we rely very heavily on email. And it's, it's not an uncommon thing for Tim and I to come in to work in the morning and to have dozens of emails waiting for us, um, representing the activity and the project work that took place overnight with our teammates. Um, so the process of triaging those emails can be pretty time consuming. And not only that, it also requires a lot of context shifting between Gmail, Jira, and Bitbucket. So I assume like most other Gmail users, we use features like the threaded conversation view, um, also uh, filters and labels um, to sort of make that process a bit more efficient. But Alassian for Gmail uh, is taking it to the next level. And um, with that, we're going to take a look. And I'm going to hand over to Tim for the demo, which is this one. And so again, this is, this is a live demo, live data. So please cross your fingers for us. Thanks, Caroline. Uh, so this is a rather cut down view of what my inbox looks like when I get into work at 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, so first I'm going to jump into an email from Bitbucket, sorry, from Jira. It's actually relating to the Bitbucket cloud project though. <clears throat> so an email uh, from Jira is typically a notification about something that's happened to your Jira issue. In this case, we can see that Eric Henry has updated the sprint um, that this particular issue was going to be tackled in. Now this is good, it gives me a little bit of context about something that's happened inside of my JIRA project, but it's missing some critical details that I need in order to figure out how I'm actually gonna action this notification. So you might have seen this little Atlassian logo over in the right-hand side. And if we open it up, we actually see a full view of all of the data about that particular issue. So what the add-on does is it crawls through your currently open email looking for Atlassian links. Um, and for every Atlassian work item that it finds, it'll go and fetch it via our product's REST APIs and then display the current state of that, uh, that particular work item in your Gmail sidebar. So here we can see the issue has actually been assigned um, and it has a status of done. So in terms of triage, I can move on to the next email in my inbox. Now one of the cool things about being based on links is that it doesn't just work for notifications from our products. It also works on emails generated by humans. So here's an email that I sent out to the team uh, running up to the 1.0 release of one of our integrations, where I needed them to pull together and fix a, well, fix a few problems and resolve a few issues that were still outstanding. Now, we're actually, there are links to uh, work items across Jira and Bitbucket across multiple repositories and projects. So we display a nice little link summary view, which gives you previews of each of the items with the critical information that you need surfaced in this view. So we can see here there's a Bitbucket pull request that's still open. So I need the team to merge it. So if we click on the pull request, we see a little bit more information about uh, that particular item, including important things like who raised it, when it was last updated, and importantly, who's reviewing it and whether it's and who's actually approved it. So here we can see uh, it was approved by Caroline. Um, so we, we're almost at the state where we can probably merge it. But there are a couple of comments here which we might want to address. And the add-on actually lets us add comments um, from, the, from Gmail without actually having to go into the product as well. 
So if we jump back to the summary view, uh, we can also see that there's a notification about a pipeline. So Bitbucket Pipelines is Bitbucket's built-in continuous integration and deployment service. Um, and we can immediately see that this particular pipeline has failed, which is something we're going to need to resolve before we can ship. So if we click in here, we can see a little bit more detail about uh, what's actually happened here. Now we can see that the duration for this particular pipeline was a minute. Now this is kind of unusual. Usually this particular uh, integration test run takes five-ish minutes to complete. So I immediately suspect that something environmental has occurred that to cause this particular pipeline to fail. Now what I could do at this point is actually click and open the logs in Bitbucket and prove that that's the case. But being a little cavalier, I might just hit the rerun button instead to trigger a rebuild of that pipeline at that same commit. Now what that's doing is triggering a new build in the Bitbucket via the Bitbucket API, and then a new pipeline's been generated with a different ID, and we can see that it's in the pending state. So there'll be an agent in Bitbucket to pick up this job uh, and rebuild it, and we can come back and check those logs later on, and inevitably, when it fails again, I can actually go and identify the problem in Bitbucket and fix it properly. So if we jump back, we can see we've also got support for Bitbucket issues. So Bitbucket has its own built-in issue tracker, um, and of course, another uh, link to Jira as well. And I'm gonna jump onto another email quickly, because I wanted to show uh, how this add-on helps users uh, who are using both Jira and Bitbucket together. Now, if you're using multiple Atlassian tools in your tool chain, you end up with a lot of links to Atlassian work items inside of Jira comments. And sometimes you end up with links to Bitbucket issues inside of, uh, sorry, to links to Jira issues inside of Bitbucket pull requests as well. So here we have another Eric from the Bitbucket team uh, who's left a comment on an issue that I'm watching. Now, Eric was a developer on support last week. So we do a rotating role where we move developers in to support our support team um, and to feel some of the pain of bugs that affect our customers. Now, it looks like he's actually identified this as being a duplicate of another bug that was raised by a customer. Um, and he's pointed out that there's a duplicate issue and an open pull request addressing this particular problem. Now, again, because the add-on is based purely on links, instead of just showing us a, a, a rendered version of the uh, issue that this particular comment was applied to, it shows us the full context of everything that's going on in this, inside this particular email. Um, and handily, although at the time this particular comment was made, uh, this issue was open, this issue was potentially a duplicate, and this pull request was open, I can immediately see that both of these issues have been completed and the pull request is merged. So in terms of what I need to do to action this, I can simply move on to the next email in my inbox without actually having to go and visit any of these products. Now the really cool thing about this add-on is that it doesn't just work with Atlassian tools as well. So for example, here's a notification from Google Docs where Caroline and I were collaborating on some action items from a retrospective. Now one of the items that came out of this retro is that we wanted to add a custom emoji picker to one of our text inputs in another integration. So we're heavy users of Jira internally, as you might have guessed. So Caroline created a story to track this work in one of our projects. And again, because we have that link to the email, we can see the full context of all of the information about that particular issue without having to leave the Gmail experience. So this is a much more uh, rich contextual view than the information that you just get from this hyperlink here. So this works for all third-party tools. So if you get mentioned in a Slack notification, um, or if someone references a Jira issue at a PagerDuty instant, um, or any other custom tools that you're using in your uh, tool chain, it will work with this integration as well. Now, from a development perspective, one of the, the things that really impressed me about the Gmail add-on framework is that it works seamlessly across both desktop and your mobile if you happen to be using Android. So now I'm gonna take live demoing to the next level and attempt to cast off my personal phone to the conference, uh, via the conference Wi-Fi <laughs> and to this screen. Uh, that's, my, that's my daughter Mira, <laughs> so, which I think that means it's working, hold on. So here's my inbox. Uh, this is actually my live professional inbox, so let's see what, see what happens. <laughs> um, now first of all, I'm gonna open a particularly interesting pull request thread. Now as Caroline mentioned, uh, we have developers based across three cities in Europe, and quite often we're collaborating on pull requests, and it's not unusual for me to come in in the morning and have an email thread that looks like this. Now this is a particularly contentious one. It's actually updating our Lint style guide for one of our um, projects. So there's a lot of back and forth about how exactly we wanna handle semicolons. Spoiler alert, we actually got rid of semicolons entirely. Um, but for me to actually ingest all of this on the train on the way into work is actually a pretty painful process. I can read through every single notification and follow every thread. But as a team lead, all I'm really interested in is three things. 
And if I scroll down to the bottom, I've got that little Atlassian logo again. And the experience is really nice because I can turn it into a full page app that sits on top of my inbox experience. And the three things I'm looking for as a team lead are who's approved this pull request? And I can see that four of my senior engineers have approved it, which is fantastic. Does it have a passing build? Yes, it's got five passing, uh, five passing builds, which is fantastic. And it's merged. So as a team lead, I could go and read every single one of those 68 different notifications, or I can assume that my team has done a good job overnight and move on to the next burning issue instead. So this is really handy for my personal triage process. And the final email I wanted to show you is another notification from Bitbucket. So this deals with a specific use case that I have, but I suspect it's a universal problem. Sometimes I'll be just about to leave work, and I'll be like, okay, just finished this last feature, let's raise a pull request and see if we can get it shipped. Now, I wouldn't actually do the deployment myself until some other engineers come online, but still I want to get that code into master as quickly as possible so I don't have to deal with merge conflicts in the morning. So I raise my pull request and leave the office. Then I get on my train home, and then I get an email notification saying that Caroline has approved my pull request. So I jump down to the Atlassian add-on, hit the button, go through and look for those details again. I can see I've got Caroline's approval. I've got a passing pipeline. And because this is a, this is a pipeline build, um, I can actually click through from the pull request view into the pipeline view to get those additional details. If all looks good, only ran for a few seconds. That's because this is a, uh, <laughs> some dummy data. And then I can come back here, and because I've got those approvals and the passing build, and because I raised the code, so I'm fully aware of that context, I can actually hit the merge button, and that's gonna actually sh merge that branch into master and have it ready to be deployed um, to our customers when our European engineering team gets online. And as you can see, once I hit that button, uh, we can see the status of the pull request is now merged. Again, all without actually having to leave the context of our Gmail inbox. So this add-on not only gives you additional context, but it allows you to move, that, move all of your work items forward uh, much more efficiently. So that's the end of the demo. Um, the last bit of really exciting news that I wanted to share is that we released the add-on, the Atlassian add-on for, sorry, the Atlassian Cloud add-on for Gmail uh, this morning at 9 a.m. PST. So you can actually go and install this in your Gmail marketplace right now. Um, are there any Gmail users in the room? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, um, we're, we also have a little booth over in Moscone West, so if you want to come over and talk about the add-on or learn a little bit more about how we built it, um, Caroline and I will be here for the rest of the day and uh, for the rest of the conference as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Sweet, all right, and last I'd like to invite Kate and Nyack from Dropbox up on stage. Cool. Um, thanks, Akash. Um, hey, everyone, really excited to be here. Um, I'm Kate and Nyack. I'm a product manager at Dropbox. I'm really excited to talk about the Dropbox add-on for Gmail and um, some of our work that we've been doing with Akash and team to bring the add-on uh, out into the market. Uh, but before I dive into the demo itself, uh, I want to spend uh, a couple of moments uh, talking about uh, the broader context of how we at Dropbox see the add-on. Um, if you take a step back in how the world works today, scattered content and communication is an issue that we all face. And uh, we spend a lot of time creating and receiving content, whether that's files, documents, or presentations. And a lot of that happens directly via our email. And this activity is increasing at an unprecedented rate. And does all of our content live in one place, and is it easily accessible at any place, any time? No. Our content lives in a variety of places. It lives in our email attachments. Some of it's in our desktop. Some of it's in different content silos that we all have to deal with. At Dropbox, our mission and goal is to solve this exact problem. We're working and aiming to build this one unified home for work that seamlessly connects all the different apps, devices, and tools that you go through every day. We're aiming to bring a range of solutions through broad partnerships, like the one that we have with um, Google Cloud, to, to make the way we work frictionless and even enjoyable. And the Dropbox add-on for Gmail, in our view, is the first step in our broader investment in the G Suite ecosystem uh, to make this work simple for our users. Uh, we're working on a range of other initiatives as well, but with that, we'll quickly get started with the demo here. So let me quickly switch over to the Mac. And yep, 
Sweet. So um, let's quickly get started. And for the purposes of this, purposes of this demo, um, let's imagine that I'm John, also working on a marketing team as a marketer at a completely different company uh, called DM Coforce. And uh, just like many of you, or pretty much everyone here, a lot of my work happens directly via email. I get a lot of content over email, I share content over email, and a lot of that sort of work that I do with my colleagues happens um, over this platform. And in this case, um, let's say that I am John and I'm working on an upcoming campaign with two of my colleagues, Mitch and Henrik. And there is an email thread associated with, my, uh, with this work that I'm doing with my colleagues, and I can quickly click into it. And clicking into this, I notice that there are a couple of different messages across um, from my colleagues around this campaign where they've shared some content with me. And the first thing I notice here is that there is the Dropbox add-on which can be accessed directly from the right-hand side panel. And clicking that brings up the, the, the reading experience on, on the side. And what this does is in a centralized panel, it parses all the different messages across the email thread that I have going on with my colleagues and pulls out all the pieces of content that's relevant to me within, uh, within the add-on. So not just email attachments, but any links to Dropbox files or folders are all pulled out and surfaced in one specific place. Not only that, but it also gives me some additional context around the content that's being shared. For any piece of content, I know who shared it, when they shared it, and how they attach this uh, within the email thread. We've all been in this place where we have long email threads with many back and forth replies, and you've no clue where that one link was. Now, you don't have to go digging for that one piece of attachment or link. The add-on does the heavy lifting for you and pulls out all the pieces of content that you might care about. Further, if a piece of content is shared via Dropbox, now I can always stay in sync. I always have access to the latest and greatest content. So for instance, if I and Mitch were working together on that campaign proposal draft, and I go ahead and edit and make some changes to it, I don't have to go back and re-upload another version of this back in my email thread. I can stay within Gmail, within context, and get access to uh, the latest and greatest version of that content. At Dropbox, as I was saying earlier, our goal is to create this one unified home for your work and help you stay organized. With that, the add-on actually allows you to save any piece of content directly back to your Dropbox. So I can quickly click the, um, I can quickly click the uh, piece of content that I want to save, and right within Gmail, without having to switch apps, without having to open a separate tab, log into my Dropbox, right where, where I am, I get access to all the different folders that I have set up across my Dropbox. I can pick one of my folders where I want to save this piece of content, hit save, and just like that, with a couple of clicks, I now have saved my, uh, my um, image back to that specific folder. So really, for any piece of content that's shared with me, regardless of its size, from the smallest doc to the largest video, I can go in and just with a couple of taps, save this back to my, um, save this back to my Dropbox in the specific folder that I care about. Now let's say that uh, I've been working on this campaign for a while, uh, and we want to make this campaign really interesting. So we've been creating a, 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 an HD video for this campaign. And I want to share this with uh, Mitch and Henrik. So how do I go about doing that? So what I can do now is I can quickly hit reply all. And I can say, here is the video I've been working on. And now what I can use is I can use the Compose experience that we have integrated within the Dropbox add-on that Akash was demonstrating earlier. So now you can see that within the Compose window, I get this Dropbox icon right here, and I can click that. And what that does is it pulls up the, the folder structure that I have within my Dropbox, and I can navigate that seamlessly, again, without having to go to my Dropbox, download, and do all of that stuff. I can just do all of this right within my Gmail. Um, I can go to my work stuff, and let's say I have a large video, like a, a 1080p HD video that I've been working on and I need some feedback from Mitch and Henrik. Now with one click, I can now insert that large video directly into the body of my email. And now you'll notice that rather than inserting like a, a simple link, which you would do if you were to switch apps and switch context, now you have more information and context around that piece of content. You have a rich preview of what that 
piece of content is, you have the title, and so Mitch and Hendrik know exactly what's being shared with them. And so I can hit send, and now, uh, through the Compose experience, we have enabled John or myself to share this large piece of content without having to worry about email limits. Uh, with traditional email attachments, you're restricted by file sizes and email limits, but using the Compose experience with Dropbox, you no longer have to deal with any limitations. You can share the largest file without, ha uh, without a hassle. And this Compose experience is something that uh, is coming soon. And more importantly, quickly switching over to mobile here for a second. Um, what I wanted to say was, more importantly, millions of our users across Dropbox and Gmail use, the, uh, use our products on the go where they are uh, on mobile and on web. And we want to enable our users and meet them where they are. We want to connect and bring these seamless workflows, not just on the web, but across mobile. And uh, through this add-on, we provide a seamless experience across not just web, but across email as well. So all the functionality they just showed, uh, including saving, the, uh, saving a file back to your Dropbox, navigating your Dropbox, is all available on mobile. And on mobile, as Akash was saying, uh, saying earlier, the, uh, the pain is especially stark because you have to switch apps and it's really hard. Uh, mobile devices aren't really suited to kind of moving content across apps. And, and we, with a particular view on enabling a cross-browser, cross-platform experience, um, we've, uh, we've worked on this add-on. Um, with that, I'm moving back to uh, my slides here. Um, yeah, so how do you get started? Uh, the, the first thing is uh, we have a pod talk uh, later today at 3.30 where we'll be talking not just about the Dropbox add-on for Gmail, but we'll be talking about our broader partnership with Google uh, where we have a lot of exciting things and product initiatives in store, um, not across Google Doc Sheets and Slides, email, Gmail, as we just talked about right now, as well as Hangouts. Um, so please come and visit us at the pod talk um, and uh, you can talk and learn more about uh, our product work. And then you can also visit us, our, uh, visit us at our booth at W1917. Um, uh, you can talk to one of our staff members, learn more about Dropbox, all the exciting things that we have going on. And finally, I'm, an, I'm excited to announce that our uh, add-on is going to be live and available uh, for everyone starting tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST. Uh, as I mentioned, the Compose experience will be available further down the line. Uh, but installing the add-on, as Akash was telling earlier, is a breeze. Uh, just go to Gmail, uh, click, go to the G Suite Marketplace, couple of taps, and you can get going. And if you're an admin, you can do a domain-wide install and, uh, and get this set up for, uh, for everyone in your org. Uh, but overall, we see this as like the first step in the broader investment in, uh, in G Suite. And uh, this is just that first step in connecting people's content across the range of tools that they use and, and love. Um, with that, I'll hand over to Akash. So, thanks so much. Thanks, Akash. All righty, thank you so much. So, the add ons that we saw from Atlassian and Dropbox are launching. Uh, well, the Atlassian one is already launched, and the Dropbox one is coming later this week. Uh, Compose Actions and the Box add on are launching later this quarter. So, keep an eye out for those. And remember, these apps are joining a large catalog of, of Gmail add-ons that are available via the G Suite Marketplace for everything from project management to bug tracking to to-do list to CRM to a, ho a whole range. So um, with that, I'd like, to, I'd like to close. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, session. Hopefully you saw um, some interesting ways that you can use Gmail add-ons within your own organization, whether it's using some of the add-ons in our ever-growing catalog or by building your own add-ons for internal use. And I want to give a special thanks to uh, all of our presenters from Box Atlassian and Dropbox, who did a wonderful job. Uh, look out for their add-ons in the marketplace over the next few weeks. And uh, a few of us will be up at the front. If you have any questions, feel free to come over, and, uh, and we can chat one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference.